Protestant is protest. And if you're protesting the Catholic Church, then why are you going to church on Sunday, just like the Catholics? Because that's what Sunday worship well, we is. Um, it's, it's coming out on social five, media. Like five minutes. There's also a book about it called National Sunday right. Law. This is it's coming out now. That worshiping on Sunday is a doctrine of the Catholic Church. They right. changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. So all these Protestant religions that go to church on Sunday, why? how are you going to call yourself a Protestant protesting the Catholic Church if you're following one of the Catholic Church's main doctrines? And here's also something for the AME Zion Church, which is a predominantly black denomination. Your affirmation of faith says, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, forgiver of sins, if you are an AME Zion church and you are of a Protestant background, why does your affirmation of faith say that you believe in the Holy Catholic Church? Something is not stirring the Kool-Aid. But that all goes to show you the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 48. Something's, something's not stirring the Kool-Aid with the AME Church, the AME Zion Church. And again, Richard Allen founded the AME Church because so-called black people were not allowed to attend Methodist churches. And when our people had church on the slave plantation, they had to have a so-called black church with white supervision. And when it comes to the black church that I used to attend as a child, that model is still followed today. Read. Book of Syrac, Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 and 13. Separate thyself from thy enemies. Separate thyself from thy enemies. Stop trying to live and be one with white people and all these other nations United colors of Benetton, we can all hold hands and be one people. That's not right. how the Lord intended it. And these people will let you know straight up that they want no dealings with you. And there's nothing to be upset about. Read. Separate thyself from thy enemies and take heed of thy friends. Right. Separate thyself from thy enemies and take heed of thy friends and brothers. But forgiveness for whom? Your own people. Right. Forgiveness is the key. And in all actuality, what I used to say about forgiveness when I was younger is, but wait a minute, I'm having a I'm having a hard time with forgiveness because these people done did whatever they did to me and got to go on and live their life and I still gotta I still gotta deal with the ramifications of what they did. But but these people ain't been punished or nothing for the evil that they did. So forgiveness is a little difficult for me. And that's in all honesty. But as you come into the truth and as your spirit matures, one thing you realize you do have to do is you have to forgive your people so that you don't create grudges amongst your people. And that doesn't hinder us coming together as a people. Now, that doesn't, if you forgive somebody, that doesn't mean that you have to interact with them on a regular basis. Because it says in Matthew, then if a man, if a man does not confess before two or three witnesses, then treat him as a heathen man in a public. So you can be like, yo, I forgive the brother for what happened, but what I'm gonna do is, as black folks today like to say, I gotta love that man from a distance. Like, he's still, I can't put him out the nation, he's still a brother, but it would be best for everybody if I was over here and he stayed over there. And our people talk to them, we should be the last people. With all the hell we've been through, we should be the last people talking about forgiveness is the key. Because even the Lord says that we shouldn't forgive 
the so-called white race uh -huh. for the evil and the yeah. wickedness that they've done. I don't know, it looks kind of blurry to me. Because according to scripture, it might be they're going to have to pay for what uh -huh. they've done. It might be hidden the sun. Get Isaiah 14 and 1. You think Jordan Neely's family wants to forgive that dude that killed that, that, that killed him? Do you think Ralph Yarl's family wants to forgive that old cracker that killed him? Because the, the, the young brother was just trying to be a responsible teenager, go pick up his little brothers after school, he knocked on the wrong door completely by accident, and the cracker shot him in the head. Uh, wicked, sir. You think his family is ready to forgive after that? You think the family of Emmett Till is ready to forgive even though Carolyn Bryant died? And in all honesty, that's not a flex. That woman got to go on about her business and live her life without any type of repercussions for what happened. Because she caused that young brother's death. And we, we did a pull-up a few years ago on an incident called Corner Store Caroline, where a young brother, eight years old, a young brother got hemmed up by the police because reports came out that he grabbed some white woman's flat behind. And that was one thing that brothers were saying, was like, yo, that woman has no idea that that brother could have been another Emmett Till. But what happens, when these Edomites move into our spaces, is they don't give a damn about what, they don't give a damn about our issues, our causes, and what we've been through. They just there for the cheap rent. Read. So look at Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. The Lord is going to have mercy on our people and he's going to choose us. Read. And set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And all these other nations are going to be right there with us. Read. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We're going to bring them with us to Israel. But how are they coming? Read. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Continue. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Right. We're going to take the captives, whose captives we used to be, and we're going to rule over our oppressors. We are going to rule over the white man and the other nations, as it says in Revelations, with a rod of iron. We're going to put them in harsh bondage for a thousand years. The other nations get to go on about their business and still be under us, but they can go on to their lands and do whatever it is they do. The Edomites, the paper plate, the paper plate people, them on the other hand, they are going to be genocide. Right. Like they tried to do to our Danite brothers and sisters to establish this land. And the, the chapter goes on to say, the earth is going to be at rest. Even the birds are going to sing. Because you know they be trying to do stuff with the animals too. They, they even turn the animals into slaves. Because they want to have everything for a pet. So the animals in the earth. I had it too far up. The earth is going to be at rest. Because they want to enslave all the animals. And that's why they want to go green. And they talking about climate change. Because they didn't jack up the earth so badly. But after a thousand years of harsh, brutal slavery, they're going to be taken out of here. And to quote Michael Jackson, that is how you heal the world and make it a better place. That being said, death and destruction to the white man and the other nations, peace, safety, power, and glory to the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm going to say Shalom, which means peace in the Hebrew tongue. Shalom. 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 The boss of the blood of the spirit. All praise to you. How about Shimon Shiak Yahweh Shah for heaven and our money? The brother brought out a lot of good, excellent points for our people, man. You know, I need to wake up. You know, I need to see that the time is now. You know, I need to see that the so called white man's kingdom is falling. You know, I need to see that they're choking the hell out of our brothers in, in May of 2023. 
Oh yeah, we're gonna stay on that, man. Yeah. Give me them Psalms 10 and 1. Let's start out with that. Let's start with Psalms the 10 chapter, the first verse. Yeah, we're gonna stay with that, man. The so-called white man has gentrified the neighborhood. That's me. Walking through, tapping me like nothing, all nonchalant. That's me, yeah, it is you. I'm glad you know that. Yeah, it is you. <laughs> they done gentrified all up in your neighborhood. Walking downtown Brooklyn, we know we always bring it out, but walking downtown Brooklyn without a care in the world, you know what I'm saying? They ain't gonna pay for that, man. There's gonna be a price to pay for all of this, man. Read what you got, uh, uh, Psalms 10 and 2. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 10 and verse 1. Bring it out. Psalms 10 and 1. Come on, read. Read. Yeah, the book of Psalms, chapter 10 and verse 1. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou self in times of trouble? Because a lot of times we might feel like, that's what uh, uh, the Black Panthers, that was one of their things. Well, if there's a God, why is the black man suffering? Because a lot of times it feels like, damn, Lord, why does stuff keep happening to us? But the, 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 the uh, punishment in Deuteronomy said, he will kindle a fire in his anger that will burn forever, man. So it's like, damn, it seems like this thing will continue on forever and ever. Read again from the top. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why you stand afar off, O Lord? Yeah. Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? Yeah, but they see, like, how can God be with y'all? Y'all niggas getting choked to death on a subway train. Y'all got, we, I guess you got the children of God, and look what's happening to y'all. Y'all got must be hiding himself. He must be not around in a day of trouble. But, but it seems like that. But the Lord said, listen, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to judge everyone that's coming against you. I'm going to deliver you, but I'm going to do it on my time. Y'all going to have to fill them curses. Y'all going to have to be knee deep. Whole Psalms, give me um, Isaiah 1 and 3. Uh, whole Psalms, we're going to go back to Psalms 10. Link that up with Isaiah in the first chapter, the third verse. The Lord said, I'm going to make y'all feel this punishment, man. So rest in peace to the brother Jordan Neely. We see that brother over the years, man. He used to impersonate Michael Jackson in Times Square. And you know what? Not for nothing. I'm not just saying this. So don't get simple, Israel. But I always knew that brother, something was mentally wrong with him. Mm. He, he, had a, he knew enough to impersonate Michael Jackson and you were dancing or whatever. He had some of his mental, but I could kind of see, because oh, I would see the brother when he was not performing. And he would just have the Michael Jackson clothes on and you would see the brother wasn't, he wasn't all the way there. He was jacked up. I think they said his mother got murdered in front of him. When he was like five years old or something like that, and he, you know, he had a lot of trauma and depression. The brother wasn't all the way mentally there. And for whatever reason, not to mock the brother nothing, but he fell on hard times and had to, you know, ask for money. You know, shit, go, I mean, it's like you uh, go and impersonate Michael Jackson again and, and make some money. Get a little hustle, but that is not to mock the brother. For whatever, he wasn't in his mental capacity enough to even do that anymore. So he just fell on hard times, like, look, I'm just asking people for money. I ain't even in my mind right to do my Michael Jackson impersonation and perform and get a couple of hours. Read, kid. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. The ox knows his owner. The Lord said the ox knows his owner. Come on. And the ass, his master's trip. And the ass, his master's trip. But Israel do, do not know. The Lord said Israel do not know. Come on. My people do not consider. The Lord said our people don't know, neither do they want to know. They don't consider. Israel don't know and they don't consider. You don't look at these things. So that's why the Lord, that's why I seem like, Lord, why are you hiding? Why do you keep letting this happen to us? And it seems like nothing's done about it because you don't want to consider. You don't know and you don't want to know. So the Lord said, I'm going to make you know. I'm going to make you know. Thessalonians said, this shall not wicked be revealed. You take the average so-called white guy that was in the Marines on a subway train and he's racist as hell. Would he have done that to a white man that was begging for change? Or acting so-called erratic? Or asking, uh, what they say? He, they said he was like forcing the people to give him money and stuff. Would he have done that to an Edomite? Uh -uh. No, no, I doubt that. Right, come on. Yeah, you know, Isaiah. Right, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 4. If that was a white man on the train, you think he would have got choked to death like that? Huh? If, if that was a white guy on that subway train, you think he would have got choked to death like that? Did you see what happened in the news? Uh, are you from New York? Oh, you don't even really know where you at right now. But anyway, let's, all right, but you don't know what's going on with the news. You're acting like you don't know what's going on. Or maybe you're too high to remember what's going on. Hold on, read. Isaiah 24, a sinful nation. Ah, sinful nation. The Lord said, ah, man, you got such a sinful nation. 
We done. A sickle nation. Come on. A people laden with iniquity. A people laden with iniquity. Come on. A seed of evil doers. A seed of evil doers. The Lord said, this is why this is happening to you. See, as, as, as much as you can be outraged, angry, we bring this out all the time. But you got to know why the most high is doing this to our people. Right? Come on. Children that are corrupted. Children that are corrupted. Right? That they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. The Lord said, our people have provoked them to anger. So you're going to fill these curses. Yes, I'm still going to allow you to get choked to death by your racist damn enemies in these last days. But they are gone away back. They are gone away back because they get to all kinds of doctrine, philosophy. You don't love one another. You don't appreciate one another. You evil towards one another. Come on. Why should he be stricken anymore? The Lord said, why should you be stricken anymore? God, he will revolt more and more. You will revolt more and more. You will be rebellious more and more. Why should you be stricken anymore? Why should the Lord punish you and work your behind? It's like, well, I am letting you get choked to death. So you can try to wake up and see that I'm punishing you and you still get more wicked. So what, what is the use? What is the use? Why pointless? Why come on? The whole head is sick. The Lord said the, the whole, whole head, head is sick. sick. The whole head is sick. Come on. And the whole heart faint. What Lord said? And and the, the whole, whole heart, heart faint. faint. The Lord said the whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. The whole body. Right? And the head and the heart is two major parts of the body. Why right? come on? From the sole of the foot. Sorry. From the sole of the foot. The Lord said from the sole of the foot. Come on. Even unto the head. Even unto the head. There is no soundness in it. What? There is no soundness in it. So now the Lord is saying all of the body, not just the main parts, the heart and the head, but from the foot to the head, all the body is jacked up. And that means our entire nation, from Judah down to Israel, from the so-called Negro down to the Mexican. I've been in California for the last two weeks, and a lot of Mexicans, they was acting real funny, man. Mm. They thought about that fight. You can tell. They was giving you a little attitude and shade. Now, there, there's already tension between Judah and Issachar in Cap. Not all of them, you know, some, some get along, but you can tell there was a little beef and tension because that fact just happened. They still mad because Moreno beat them. Man, that's they but stupid ass sports, man. They just but dumb ass sports, man. Get, 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 uh, get happy that look, okay, your, your two brothers competed. It was a good competition, one on one. And the next time it could be the, the Northern Kingdom brother. Now I don't know. I really don't care. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just sports, man. It just really the white men just put you in there to beat each other ass so they can make some money. Right. It, it's just you know it's a little friendly competition, whatever. Yeah, fighting men's ego and machismo. They get into that whole spirit. To me, it's pure fight. But it is what it is. It's entertainment. May the best man win. But you take it all personal. Oh, we gonna treat these niggas funny now because they beat us in boxing. Come on. Yeah, man, and I'm not just saying this. I'm not paranoid, but I'm like, they're acting a little funny and shady, man. <laughs> so I'm losing, man. Because what? I, I, I go to Cali right after the fight was over. Right. So now I'm out there for two whole weeks. I'm around. It's mad. This is in Southern California. And I'm like, yo, so I'm losing, man. This is the folly going on with our people. Instead of saying, hey, it was a good fight. The brother won. Next time, maybe the Northern Kingdom brother might win or whoever. But it's all funny, that's serious, man. But we worry about frivolous things, man. We worry about frivolous things. So now you butt hurt and you a sore loser, so let me let me treat the Moreno customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I agree. I say one and six. From the sole of the foot, from the sole of the foot, God, even unto the head, even unto the head, the northern and southern kingdom, God, there is no soundness in it. There's no soundness in it, God. But wounds, for what? But wounds, wounds man, the wounds represents the curses and the afflictions and, and the stuff that's happened to us from the white men and the other nations. The choking out, the court system, the institutionalized racism, the attack on our children, that's all inclusive, God, and bruises, and a putrefying sword. A putrefying sword is a sword that don't heal. A sword that gets corroded. It gets worse and worse. Like you, the damn sword gets so bad it turns, it gets game green. And you damn it gotta cut the limb off. That's how the curses are amongst our people. It's like they get worse and worse to the most I gotta just cut us off as a nation. But he still wants to save and preserve one third of us. Come on. They have not been closed. Not a bound up. Not the modified with ointment. Our wounds have not been healed. That's just like Revelation 11 chapter when it says, 
our dead bodies will not suffer to be put in graves. You know, there was no relief. There's no relief for the condition that we're in. There's no healing of our death state. There's no healing of our wounds. There's no healing of our affliction. It just it just seems like it get worse and worse. The black man can get, get choked to death for 15 minutes on a damn subway train and nothing's done about it. Like, come on. Your country is desolate. Our country is desolate. Go ahead. Your cities are burned with fire. So, so go back to Psalms 10 and 1 again. So that was just a little quick, quick link on that. The Lord said what? You don't, you don't know and you don't consider. So that's why it's so bad amongst us, man. You don't know that you So that's why uh, Asaph has to say in, his, in Psalms 10, Lord, where you at? Damn, Lord, it's like, it's like you forsook us. It's like that, but the Lord have not forsook us. The proof is the truth. Right? Box. <laughs> got no problem. But the proof is the truth. You know what I'm saying? Uh. The Lord did not forsake us because he got us and he got a remnant of us coming back to his truth. And Israel is everywhere, man. And I, and I want us to continue to be everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Israel is everywhere. Israel is, is waking up, man. We wake it up. And we're everywhere. It was just, you know, the, the unity is lacking, but we are waking up to these different camps and congregations. Uh. Like, come on. Psalm 71. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? Right? And that goes with Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, where it says, The Lord kindled a fire in his anger that will burn forever. Meaning the curses seem like they will never end. Right, come on. The wicked in his pride, the wicked in his pride. This little average damn uh, uh, white boy, right? Ex-Marine, in, in his pride, the wicked in his pride, because Esau is the wicked by nature, and in his pride, the, to persecute the poor. And that's what a lot of these so-called white supremacists, and they ain't nothing but little white supremacists. Probably just sitting on a train acting like a little uh, 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 white boy, but he probably finished watching some damn clan videos the night before, and said it's a good day, good time to strangle a nigga. All right, read again from the top, uh, verse two. Psalms 10 and two, the wicked in his pride to persecute the poor. And my brother Jordan immediately was poor, man. Like, the, the reason why he was able to do that See, the white supremacists, a lot of times, they go out for soft targets. He, well, he couldn't do that to a brother. He couldn't even do that to the average thug. A lot of thugs, I want them, they're off and they kill each other. And they, but there's a certain thug with a certain spirit that's a man, I'm going to kill that fucking white boy. And, and let me hit you something. I saw uh, on the comments and different social media, there was a lot of black men that said, if I was there, if that was me, or if I was there, Brother said, listen, I would have grabbed the Edomite and start choking him said he got off the brother. So a lot of brothers were like, yo, that couldn't have been me. Or if I was there, that would have went down. You know what I'm saying? Even, even, um, there was even a sister that said, look, if I was there on that train, I didn't put that happen. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got these rough ass New York women. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, where's, uh, where's Scar Lip at? You know what I'm saying? Right, that me. The wicked is proud. Bloodhead blue rapper Scarlet. Yeah. Get the fuck out! Get the fuck out! Get the fuck out! Where the hell my name was at? You know what I'm saying, huh? Yeah, when the sauce was for my that was all. That was all. Yeah, that's that. That's that gutter New York. That's that. Just that gutter New York low down, shifty, greasy environment. Like Onyx said, and she was with Onyx too, and they was, they was up to my back. Get the fuck out! Why y'all got to have that same energy for Esau, right? Uh -huh. Why asses needed to be on that train? To tell Esau that, that uh, get off my brother. Right. Right, and uh -huh. put that work in on him. Uh -huh. That, that scarred lip chick, man, she looked like, she go toe to toe with dudes, man. <laughs> she had all the bloods around her. You know, all the, you know, yeah, you so gangster. Jake's so gangster. Okay, and, and, and be that, but be that for the right reason. All right. All right. Like, come on. So I was telling you, too. The wicked and his pride do persecute the poor. So, uh, uh, they said the eat of my slave. I didn't know him. I don't forget his name. Yeah, Penny, something Penny. Yeah. Something Penny. Uh, yeah, they said his name. They said his, only said his name about one or two times. See, they protected him. Huh? They, you, don't, you don't hear his name all over the media like that. Wow. The brother, of course, he's dead, so it's like, whatever. But what did he do? He persecuted the poor. The wicked and his pride persecuted the poor. Esau, you a damn sucker. Daniel Penny. Yeah, Daniel Penny, yeah, right? Esau, you a damn sucker. And 90 to 95% of the time, you go after soft talkers. You go after women, 
children and brothers that ain't trained and don't have the right spirit. Right. And a lot of times it's brothers that's desolate. The brothers that's a little tough and sweet, the police take care of them by shooting them legally. They got a legal right. The brothers that got a little, you know, a, a man hardness to them, they kill them, but they use, they use the system to kill them. So you go up to either way to some time because it's an uneven fight. You got a badge and a license to kill you. It ain't an even play. So that's what these devils do. We just try to show our people we still in this captivity under these curses. The only way that's going to be lifted if we come back to the most side of the More likely than not, that couldn't happen to a brother that's in the street. That couldn't happen to a brother that's trained and got the right mind and spirit. Because number one, the angels are walking with that brother. And number two, the brother probably going to know how to defend himself. Number three, you're not going to be in a position, no mockery to draw in nilly, but you're not going to be in a position where you got to beg on the tree. You know what I'm saying? So a man of the Lord, you wouldn't even be in that position with Esau to choke you out like that. Right? right. Come on. The wicked in his pride do persecute the poor. Yeah. Let him be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wickedness, for the wicked. The Lord said, let him be taken in the devices that he have imagined. So Esau, you, we're going to choke your ass to death in the kingdom of heaven. We got to, and some of it going to happen now when these race wars break out, man. Right? When these race wars break out, Jake gonna be choking these damn devils to death also. That's all. Every dog, Bow Wow Esau, has his day. Every dog has his day. You're gonna be getting choked the hell out by the black man also in that day when these race wars and different things break out. That's all right. But for now, we gotta eat our punishment, man. Jump down to the eighth verse. Verse eight. He sitting in the lurking places of the villages. I started uh, seven. Verse seven. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit. Yeah, this, uh, he, was, he was homeless and he was trying to hurt. Now, there's conflicting reports. I was bringing this out when I was uh, teaching about it in Hollywood in the camp, right, this past uh, Saturday, Saturday. There's conflict. Some of the people saying the brother was aggressive towards the people. Some of the people saying, no, he was just acting erratic and asking. He was upset. Nobody was helping him, you know, giving him money for food and water. Other people claim he was up on them being a threat. So there's conflicting reports. But either way, what did the Lord say? His mouth is full of cursing. Yes. See, his mouth is full of cursing. Every time Esau kill our people, he's going to make them look like the bad guy. Like, come on. And deceit. And, 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 and deceit. deceit. And see, they're going to try to but make make the brother somehow guilty of his own death. Or when a nigga, they're going to just lie or whatever they got to do. Or he was a threat, so we, we had to neutralize the threat. Right, all right, subdue the man, but don't kill him. All right, even if you felt like he was a threat, subdue the man, but don't kill him. Come on. And fraud. And what? And fraud. His mouth is full of uh, person, deceit, and fraud. He saw a damn liar, man. He always lying on our people. I remember they killed the brother um, years ago when that damn blockhead greaseball Giuliani, he was mayor of the city, and they killed that brother Patrick Dawson on 8th Avenue off of 34th Street. They pulled out the brother's juvenile record. What the hell I got to do with shoot them and kill them? That's supposed to be sealed. That, that's supposed to be sealed. But this damn racist bastard basically did something illegal because the man's record's supposed to be sealed. He pulled out Patrick Duffy. I think Patrick Dawson was like 30. And he pulled out his record from when he was 14. And he had, a, I think he got a truancy in school or something. Or he got a couple of the weeds, something like that. And the, that but that was the, that was, his red, that racist bastard, that was way, uh, his way of saying this nigga got what he deserved. He was a criminal. And the man was 30 years old now, legitimate job, working on security in 34th Street, mind his business, smoking a cigarette. He should have been doing that, but. And the cop asked him, yo, do you have any drugs? Man, said, yo, get out of my face, man. Every black man is not a drug dealer. Man, yo, mind your business, man. I'm here chilling in the bar, and I just came out for a cigarette break. Oh, uh, uh, hey man, but I'm saying you got me here. So the brother got mad and started pushing him up. He didn't know he was an off duty cop. He was like, yo, get the F out my face. I told you I don't have no drugs to sell, man. Mm. They exchange words, they start fighting. The cop pull out, shoot the brother. Cali Mc still don't think he identified himself as a cop. Shot and killed the brother and he got away with it. No indictment. And, and, and uh, uh, Giuliani gonna go, and because of the city, with, you know, the, the tension was rising up. Cause they were like, they, he just murdered this man. And he gonna go unseal the man's uh, uh, juvenile record from 14 years old, and then he got caught with a bag of weed or something. To try to say now, uh, 16 years later, see he's a drug dealer. When a man working a legitimate job, so we knew the brother personally. The brother used to come out of camp and greet us. 
So we knew the brother had a legitimate job. But I said, yo, get out of my face, man. Every black man don't sell drugs. Get out of here. Right, and see that, they get into a fight. The, uh, it was a Northern Kingdom cop, shot and killed a brother and got off. Mm. Talking about his life was in danger because they was fighting. So that's what they do, man. Right, come on. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. It's a fraud, man. This devil is a fraud. Come on. Under his tongue is mischief and, and vanity. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Right, he's a mischievous bastard, man. He said, I'm gonna go dig up this brother's juvenile record from when he was 14 years, years old. That's the mischief. And the vanity is, what the hell I got to do with 16 years later? You ask the man, do he sell drugs? Obviously the man, he's not 14 no more, he's 30 now, working a legitimate job. But that's the, that's the vanity, that's the mischief and vanity of the white man. So-called white man, come on. He said it. He sitting in the lurking place and Esau's always looking for an opportunity. That damn devil, Danny Penny, uh, a damn undercover white supremacist that used to be in your marine, says a perfect opportunity to kill this homeless nigga. I'm gonna choke this homeless nigga to death and I'm gonna lie because I'm white and I say so. I'm gonna say he was a threat. Right, come on. He sitting in the lurking places of the villages. He sitting in the lurking places of the villages. Yeah. In the secret places, do he murder the innocent? Do what? The secret places, do he murder in the murder the innocent? Yeah. In the secret places, do he murder the innocent? Because he's the damn devil that the right. Bible speaks of. Right. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Holy Bible. He's the devil that the Bible speaks of. So he sits in the lurking places and murder the innocent. Now he's a devil, man. He's a damn devil that the Bible speaks of. Come on. His eyes are privately set against the poor. The Lord said. His eyes are privately set against the poor. The Lord said his eyes are privately set against the poor. Right? Because what? They'll act like, no, it's not a racial thing. It's not, you know, America's a, we're, what's that uh, saying? I guess it was so much evil, he stopped saying. We're living in a post-racial America. Yeah, that's what it was. We live in a post-racial America. Right. No, it's, it's, it's not, it's not post-racial though. Right, that's not, but it's not post-racial. It's still very much racial. Right, right, very much racial it still is. Right, they had that uh, cockamamie damn saying going on up here. Oh wait, well you know we're living in a post-racial society. No, but it's very much for all them damn police killings killed that saying real quick. From George Floyd and before George Floyd. And George Floyd, when he got choked to death in damn 2020, there's the same thing going on, man. Same thing going on. And the Lord is doing that to our people because you don't want to wake up. Come on. He lied in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lied in wait to catch the poor. To do what? He lied in wait to catch the poor. And that's what damn you pretty did. I can kill this homeless dude. But ah, uh, God, I can kill him. I can kill this homeless dude right on the street and get away with him. The, he lied and fight to catch the poor. He do catch the poor when he draw him into the net. The Lord said he do catch the poor when he draw him into his net. Ah, oh, yes, see, we can say this nigga acted erratic. But like I said, if you check it out, the white man only go after, the so-called white man, he only go after soft targets, man. He's, he's only after soft targets. Like I said, honestly, even in this day and age with all the ignorance and evil of our people, he wouldn't have did that to a, he couldn't have did that to a so-called black man that's trained and have the right spirit. He couldn't do that to a brother with the right spirit, man. Like that, he crouched it and humbled himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. The Lord said he crouched and humbled himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Right? And that's what's happened to us. We're falling, man, by the Illuminati and the powers that be down to the regular on damn ex marine uh, uh, Daniel Penny on a damn subway train choking the brother out. Right? So it's, it's, like I said, it's always a soft target. He lie in wait to persecute the poor. Right? Come on. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see me. Arise, O Lord. What is that? Not allowed on the set. Right? Yeah, see that? He, he, he lied in wait to murder the innocent. And what they say a lot of times, what happens? These nations, they get away with this because they feel like, look, God is not with them. The Lord is not with them. You know what I'm saying? They finish. They done. So that's why the brother's able to get murdered on a damn subway like that. Come on. Arise, O oh Lord, O oh God. 
lift up thy hand to get back the humble. Wherefore, do the wicked contend? Jump down to uh, 15. Uh, Psalms 10 and 15. Verse 15. Break down the arm of the wicked. What say? Break down the arm of the wicked. And the evil man. What is the Lord going to do? Break, the, break down the arm. The Lord said He's going to break down the break down the arm of the wicked. Of the wicked. Who's the wicked? Esau. His arm represents his strength. Why would He break somebody's arm? That arm is finished. God. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. You know imagine trying to fight with a broken arm. I mean, if you train, you still can. And but imagine if it's your strong arm. You, you're right. If somebody break their damn arm. Now you kind of jack up, you got it. Right, come on. Break down the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness to thou find none. Right, so what's going to happen is Esau's going to be eradicated out of the earth. The scriptures say, seek out his wickedness till there be none. Because once we, once Yahweh shall come and deliver us and destroy Esau and bring us up out of here, we're going to put Esau on, on slavery for a thousand years. And then we're going to exterminate the ass according, oh. according to the book of Obadiah. So that's why it says, seek out the evil till there's none. Right? He's going to cut, we, they're going to be totally cut off so they can't even think about being an evil nation anymore. They're not going to exist. Right? Come on. Free Lord. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his hand. Yeah, the Lord said he's king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. And you bastards will get the hell up out of the land of Israel. You so-called white Jews, man. You are ridiculous anyway, man. Right? Now, on a side note, I was uh, I was at a bar last night, the, the rooftop bar at uh, uh, Times Square. Yeah, I just took my rib out, go have a drink. You know what I'm saying? I just came back in town. We're going to do some grown up stuff. God. And Amalek had babies and strollers in the bar. Mm. Babies and strollers in the bar. What? Now, you know, if me and you tried to do that, all oh, your niggas are unfit parents and all oh, call ACS and children services. The Amalek, Amalek, and they were in there drinking with, there was like three Amalek women. It was about about six Amalek men and about three or four Amalek women. It was about, there's about 10 people, in there. but it was more men than women. And I kid you not, my, my wife could tell you, they had three baby strollers, but two or three baby strollers. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it was three. I believe I seen three. And Amalek, they saw me and it was like, they saw my, I had my menorah on, and it was like, yeah, I said, uh, Shalom. No, right? You know this fight. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. So I went right up to him. I said, "Yo, why y'all got the babies in the bar?" Oh, we and, and you know what Emily said? Oh, we didn't give them an alcohol. What the hell are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? And you probably did put something in their baby bottle. You know, right? Cause you some damn nut cases. You know what I'm saying? The man told me, "I thought you can't make this stuff up." Huh? The, the man said, oh, we didn't get them. This is 12 o'clock at night. This is 12 o'clock at night. And, and well, we didn't get them out the ball. Huh? But the, the, the infant child is not supposed to be in a damn bar at 12 at night. Wow. We didn't bars at 21 and over. We was in, um, um, real quick, give me Deuteronomy 28, 43. We was in Philly. We went to uh, Philly to teach. A couple of weeks ago, we fought up to go to Cali. And after, after uh, it was the day of the fight. So after we left there, we went to a bar. We went to get some cheese steaks, and there's a uh, bar next to the, the bar is attached to the cheese steak. You get your damn cheese steak, and then we're gonna drink. But the fight happened to be on that night. So mm -hmm. we said, yo, let's all stay for the fight. And the sisters, they had, uh, three of the sisters had their children. They children like nine, 10, I think. One of the sisters' child is like 13, 14. The boss said, yo, they cannot come in here. So the sister was like, yeah, we can't hang out with y'all because we got the children with us. So we said, all right, you know, sisters, they chill for a minute. They went to their car, you know, brothers went to their car, and they went home, they had the children with them. And like, in there with damn babies on the stroke. I mean, young babies. I mean, one of the babies look about eight months old. Yes, in the I kid you not, man. If you got to see my friend, she can tell you. I'm not saying y'all don't believe me, but you know, yeah, and I said, yo, what's up? We got, it's 12 at night. People in there ordering margaritas and beers and they did last call. Let's get a beer before last call. I mean, you know, before they shut down the box. So I'm like, yo, we in here all kinds of alcohol all over the place. 
Anybody with 20 would have bought the Amalekites in there, but they dare things with me. And the people in the bar and the uh, is the the rooftop bar is attached to a hotel. The people in the bar and the hotel say nothing. Mm. Amalek do what that hell they want in this kingdom. Now yeah, protection for the complexion. Now we in Philly, the we in the damn we in the hood in Philly too. That bar was kind of ratchet. <laughs> so we wouldn't want our children in there anyway. I wouldn't want my child in no bar nowhere anyway. But for Amalek, that's a that's a damn come up. That's you know, that's a come up for him. Right? That's like, look, we run shit. We can hang out with our children if we want to, wherever, wherever. We can. Deuteronomy 28 and 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. The Lord said the stranger that is within us, the heathen, the other nations, they would get up above us very high. Again. And thou shalt come down very low. The Lord said we will come down very low. Now, uh, uh, but that's what I'm looking for. That's a privilege to Amalek. Like, basically, we can do whatever the hell we want if we want to bring our children. This is our world, our kingdom. If that was Jake and Eve, this is a ghetto. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Brother, we would have been every goddamn, we would have been every goddamn byword and proverb. Oh, the niggas, look at them. They're unfit. They're ratchet. They're ghetto. Oh, they're low down. They're so good. They're only hood niggas would have took to do something like that. Right? And this is in... This is in Times Square, so you know Times Square is, is considered a high price real estate. So it's not, it, but if that Jake did that, it would have still been frowned upon as death. Like you don't understand, Jake, um, not because it was not in the hood, but just because Jake did it, even though know, it's Times Square is a higher end real estate, it's still, man, they would have said they put their ratchetness to the city. <laughs> So read that again, King. Deuteronomy 28 43. You can't make this up. Read. Deuteronomy 28 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. You know, a restaurant that sells alcohol, different. An establishment where you know, like a pier or something, and they got bars there, and you just walk with your children, your family, but inside an actual bar? Yeah, I said, I'm going to do whatever the hell they want to do. Read, read. He shall run to thee. I'm going to read again from the top. So I can run. Deuteronomy 28 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above very high. That's their privilege, man. You know, the, the uh, complexion for the protection. But, and the money for the protection, because that's Amalek. They want every goddamn thing. But the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Well, to them that's getting above very high, that's a privilege to them. All right, go ahead. And thou shalt come down very low. When we go, when we when we was in Philly in a damn ratchet hood sports bar, they was like, yo, the children can't come in. Which, like I said, we would, I would oh, okay. want my so children in the bar. That's grown up right? stuff. Me and my, me and my, my grand, we're not going to take, I well, I told our children okay. wrong, but we're not going to take, like, my granddaughter and say, hey, come with us. We're going to a bar in town. We're going to have some drinks. Then 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, if we were to try that, oh, we're like a little girl with that. Oh, you're coming in with that East New York stuff. See, that's that project behavior. And, and we would have, listen, we would have mainly been called that by our own people. Because, of course, Jake and Eve was in, Jake and Eve was in there. They would have been, they would have been like, oh my God. Yourself, ghetto, can you, they tried to come in here with their children, but Amalek, as a matter of fact, two of the Amalek was at the actual ball. Uh, uh, rock to the shoulders like this at the ball with their drink. Yeah, man. I said, listen, see, you know what? Esau get up above us very high, but we come down very low. Well. But that's that's not a privilege I would want. Even in our kingdom, I wouldn't want that. You know, I wouldn't even want that in our kingdom. This is grown up friend. stuff. I don't even want my ch my baby children around some alcohol. Now we're in a house or at a private event that's different. You know what I'm saying? But in a bar is a grown up environment. You know what I'm saying? People, yeah. But that, that just goes to show you, right? But they would get up above every five, we would come down low, meaning they have privileges in this society to do certain things that we could never do, man. We would be ghetto, hood, ratchet, every evil damn name under the sun of here. If we walked up that elevator and rolled the damn stroller into that bar, they probably would have called police. They would call the 911 on us. Like, what are these ghetto niggas doing? See that? Like, that's the story. But like I said, I gotta reiterate, I wouldn't want that privilege. Not even in our kingdom. 
the church. Yeah, I asked for the children. We didn't have all the children on whoever's home. You know, whatever was going up the school, watching the little children. But that's how this kingdom is. Right? That's how Easter is. Like and they got the privilege to do awesome like that. Uh, I don't want to take my child to move that far. You got to be crazy out here. You brought me 28 verse 23. I'll go back to Psalms 10 and 2. Uh, where you left off? Yeah, about the heathen are perishing. I just wanted to bring that little footnote out. Because I had that wild experience with Amalek last night. I was like, damn, welcome, welcome back home to New York. That look like he's hanging out the bar with his child on a Tuesday night so at 12 o'clock that damn night. With the infant babies and damn strollers. But we got King King. Psalms 10 and what we left off. 16. Psalms 10 and 16, I believe we left off. Read that. Psalms 10 and 16. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his hand. The most high, the most high is king forever. And he's going to wipe them out of our land. Come on. Lord. Thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou will prepare their heart. Thou will cause thy ear to hear. The Lord said he will prepare the humble's heart and he will cause our people to hear. So a lot of this choking and killing and different stuff, some of our people is going to humble. And they're going to have to turn and they're going to have to hear the most high. Good. To judge the hey, uh, Mr. Daniel Penny. Mr. Daniel Penny. Did you choke the black man on the train? Yo, Daniel Penny. Huh? Did you hear about the black man that got choked on the train? Huh? <laughs> Daniel, see, you look just like him. But Daniel Penny is the guy that choked, the racist white guy that choked the black guy on the train. Oh, Daniel Penny? Yeah, the, the, the guy, he looks similar to you. I thought you was him for me. Yeah, man. Are you racist? Huh? Listen, man, I'm made of America. Oh, give me a break, man. Give me a, give me a cracky freaking break, man. Right? A Native American? What tribe are you from? Yeah, I'm from Mother's Cherokee. Oh, it's always the Mother's Cherokee. What is your father? What is your father? My father's Irish. All right, then you're finished. Then you're a white boy. Listen, that Cherokee mother stuff don't work. That's okay. That's okay. But that's not even a five Indian. That's a two dollars and fifty cent Indian, man. That's two dollars and fifty cent. Two and a half Indian. You know what I mean? Come on, man. If God is Irish, then you're done. Read it. To judge. The problem is that the oppressed. That the man of the earth. That the man of the earth. The man of the earth represents the so-called white man. I can tell you in um, Genesis, he's a man of the field. God may no more oppress. Said that the man of the earth may no oppress. Excuse me? Yes, I'm reading the Bible. The Bible deals with hatred. Give me Romans 9.13. Right, because the racist white man, the, the racist white man taught me how to be racist. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you're just saying that because you, you're saying that because you're white trash. That statement, that statement, listen, that statement within itself, that, you, you heard, you heard him? that statement within itself is racist. That statement within itself is racist. You heard what he said? He said, how can I be racist? I'm talking to you, right? So it's a privilege for a white man to talk to a black man. That's a racist statement within itself. That's a racist statement within itself. That's pride, man. Come on, Elder. he's a damn vagabond. He's a vagabond, a damn, uh, uh, looking for the next tall can of beer, and he's still proud. You see that? The man said, the fact that I'm talking to you shows I'm not racist. Like, that's what makes the statement within itself. <laughs> Nigga, I'm giving you my time. <laughs> so I'm not racist. Like, and he's sort of just told himself, you can't make this up. You can't make this up. Read it. Romans 9 and 13. As it is written, as it is written, come on, Jacob, have I loved? Lord said he loved Jacob and the 12 tribes of Israel. God, but Esau, have I hated? Lord said he hates Esau, the so-called white man. So how you going to tell me I'm turning into the thing that I'm against? I'm turning into the thing that I hate. I'm turning into the thing that I'm speaking against. Because what? The Lord gave us that script. We hate what he hates. Uh, right? So and on top of, give me Psalms 139, 21. Uh, on top of all the stuff that the so-called white race has done to us as a people, why would we hate them? By having they hated us, they damn sure hated us. Mistreated us, been mischievous and fraud and committed all kinds of fraud and deceit against us. So why the hell we want to love them? Read, King. 
Psalms chapter 139 verse 21. Do that I hate them? Oh Lord, that hate thee. So, so on that, uh, what was it, the F train? Yeah, on that F train, our brother Jordan Lilly being choked to death. You think that was love? Oh, that was love. Huh? That was love. All right. But what did that say? Do not, I hate them, but we guarantee we can put money on it. It's like betting on the damn best horse at the damn track that you know going to win. If you put money on it, if that was a so-called white man, that wouldn't happen. That would not have happened. The most, hold on, brother. The most they would have did is subdue him. Right. Psalms 139, 21 again. Okay, uh, okay. Psalms 139, verse 21. Do not I hate them, O oh Lord, that hate thee. So we hate them that hate the Lord and hate us. Good. And if not I grieve with those that rise up against thee, I hate them with perfect hatred. Yeah, right. We hate them with perfect hatred, just like they hate us with perfect satanic hatred on the left hand side. Good. I count them my enemies. I count them my enemies. So called white man is. I count them my enemies. Daniel Penny is. I count them my enemies. Daniel Penny to Brother Jordan Lee. I count them my enemies. A natural born enemy, right? But hold on, man. Hold on, back to the field. Yeah, he made Jake's life that wonderful. Yeah, he made, he made, he made uh, uh, Jake life without a pretty. A pretty with a hole in it. Right? Like the, uh, the, uh, the song of the Love Jones, right? Right? He was begging for pretty, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So the Lord said, I hate them that, that. Give me, um, give me Syrac, uh 27, 24. Go ahead, brother. What's your nationality? All right, uh, where's your father from? My father is from Belize. My mother is from Belize. Your father's from Belize, is a black man from Belize, and your mother's a so-called African American. Right, so uh, what's your question again? What's your statement again? My statement is that The point being, let me give you an analogy like uh, Elijah Muhammad uh, brought up. Then I'm going to give you the scriptures, of course. Right? If, if I tell you, who is Charlotte? Right? If I tell you there's a, a hundred snakes in this pit, 50 of them are poison, 50 of them are not. But they're all snakes. Would you jump into that pit and try to figure out which one is poisonous? Or you would stay the hell away from that pit and jump? All right, then. But I'm saying, what would you do in that scenario? You would say the hell out of that pit if you were a smart man, right? I'm not going to try to go in here and see which one is going to bite me and see which one is poisonous. Okay, that one bit me. Oh, that's a poisonous one. I'm dead. I'm not going to take that chance. So, with the so-called white man, even, hold on, brother. Hold on. Hold on. Right? You can't interrupt the man when they're talking. Wait, wait. Just, hold on. Wait, just, wait a minute. Wait your turn, brother. Let me finish my statement to this one. As black men, let us at least learn to respect each other when we're talking, ah. to not interrupt each other. It's the little things that count a lot of times. Now, brother, back to the fact of the matter. Give me um, Sirach on 12 and 10. Here's what the Lord said about all of them. I'm going to let the Bible speak. Here's what God said about all these so-called white people. I'm not going to trust not one of them, even the ones that front like they're not like that. Because those are the worst ones. Read, King. Never trust thy enemy. No, we generalize. Never, never trust, trust thy enemy. enemy. Some of them we can be okay with. Never, never trust, trust thy enemy. enemy. I said, never trust thy enemy. God, for like as I am restless, I am as short to rust. Come on, so is it wicked. See, it's the so called white people that I then said that you really got to look out for. Because their evil is going to eventually come out. So now, our job is to focus on our people. So called black. Hispanic, Native American, and Seminole Indian. We don't even have time to worry about them and be concerned with them, brothers. They're already showing their hatred and racism to us, the majority of them, the bulk of them. Let's say uh, a portion of them, you say they're not like that. But we can't rock with them either because they're not about our nation. We can be at peace with all men, but our true love and unity is with our own people. Right? So 
You're saying that, oh, the ones that are not like that and we're generalizing, the law said never trust none of them. Read it again, Jay. Right, so right, 12 and 10. All right, and then we're going to get Jeremiah 30 and 16. Read. All right, 12 and 10. Never trust thy enemy. For life has rusted. For life has iron rusted. So it's wickedness. Come on. Oh, he humbled himself. Now God is going to get deeper and say, Don't he humble himself? Then you say, You're generalizing. All of them are not like that. There's some good ones. Even the ones that are good. Come on. Don't he humble himself and go crush him. So he go crush him. No, I'm not like that. I'm not racist. And he don't, he don't even know. He's white trash. They don't even realize he's racist. He said out of his mouth, See, I'm talking to you. Does that mean I'm racist? Because what? In his white supremacist mind, even though he's a damn vagabond, he feels a black man should be honored and privileged that I'm even talking to him. That shows I'm not racist. No, that's nonsense. Read what you got, King. I'm hold on. Let me finish my point. Hey, go. He humble himself. Go. He humble himself. Go ahead. And go crouch. You know what that means? Even though they try to act like they're not like that. Right, come on. Yeah. Take good heed and beware of them. Take good heed and beware of them. Good. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hadst wiped a looking glass. So we see through the so-called white people. It's like uh, cleaning that damn glass right there. That we can see all right into the American people's house. We see through them, man. Good. And thou shalt know that his rust. The Lord said his rust, his hatred towards you, God. Have not been all together wiped away. We're going to see through the so called white oh. and we're gonna know that they're still our enemy. Right. Even the ones that try to act them. Oh, so the Bible destroys that, brother. Good. So well, I don't like about that is that we have you have white friends? friends? That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's why I actually put you down. Because I hold on, I'm gonna let you speak, but I wanna I wanna I wanna build a foundation. I wanna see that they you're coming from. That's why I asked you your nationality. Because I figured maybe you got white people in your family. But you got white friends, the white man is there somewhere in your life. Well, right, good, brother. Well, I wanted to say what you had. I know, good. So, 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 the mic is there. Yes, I do. Yeah, Khan. So, yeah, we can go ahead. Uh, what I wanted to say, though, is that I'm going to be with you in the same class. We are generalizing the white man as you said, you shouldn't trust any because we know the ones that like to get in. No, don't trust with you first, and then you realize something, and then you realize like, damn, this is the first that I talk to you all the time about me and my brothers the whole time, right? I know exactly, I know exactly what you're saying. Right, 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 right. I know exactly what you're saying. Right? Yes, right. But what I'm saying about that, though, is that in our past, my great-grandma and her mom were alive during slavery. Right. Those things, they generalized all of us. Right here. Right. 
don't hand join in hand. Oh, see, it's working for me. I got them. I'm with like them. It's working on my end. God said, don't you join in hands with them? Come on. The wicked shall not be unpunished. That's not going to stop them from being punished. And you right. going to get the hell away from them, or you going to get their punishment with them. Give me Isaiah 13, 15. Oh, really Isaiah 13, 15. And you better get away from and separate from them, or you going to get the judgment right along with them. Hold on. Hold on. Read. Isaiah 13 and 15. Good. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. When the Lord sent his judgment on them, every one of them going to be thrust through. Even the ones that's not the so-called poisonous snakes. My right, God. And everyone that is joined unto them. And you like, I'm helping the white people. I'm gathering them with, together with me. I'm getting, I'm putting out the snakes that's not poisonous. Uh. Good. And everyone that is joined unto them. Look, if you ain't God's way, brother, in that day, and you join unto them, good. shall fall by the fall. You're going to fall right along with it. So you better get out of the way of God's judgment. Give me Galatians 6 and 7. Come. Right. What's your name? Aiden. Aiden? Yeah. All right, Aiden. Repent. Come Aiden. back to the commandments of God. Aiden. Right? Your father's belief. Right? All right. All right. right? So <laughs> repent and come back to the laws of God. All right? And if you're from Belize, you're probably from the tribe of Benjamin. Or one of the northern tribes of South America. But either way, you are listening. You're listening to the commandments. These are right from about their business. They can solve black, Latino, and Native American brothers and sisters. And we're going to build a nation and rise. Get away from the white people, Abe. All right, Abe. Galatians 6 and 7. Good. Shalom, brother Aiden. Come back to eight in your nation. Read. Galatians 6 and 7. Let me salami. me. We say shalom. Right, good. Be not deceived. God's got mock. Come on. For whosoever a man soweth, listen, whatsoever the so-called white man soweth, God, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And maybe the brother's like maybe what, 18? Yeah, maybe. So yeah. you know what? He's got that, yeah. I'm going to help humanity yeah. spirit. I'm going to be the new young Martin Luther King. <laughs> <laughs> the new, and I, I want to do a compare and contrast yeah. with Martin Luther King. He was talking about niggas having a dream holding a white man's hand. Mark was talking about holding the hand of that yeah. damn M16 and mm. shooting their Esau's head off. Oh, yeah, or whatever yeah. the hell rifles they had back then. But right, God, be not yeah. see, God's not mocked. Good. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So no matter what, if you got, you got the young brother, I'm not going to mock the young brother. This is going to come here. He don't know. You don't see. He want to be a new young Martin Luther King. Right. So he looking for right. Yeah. Right. 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 I'm going to save humanity, man. We're going to look. We're going to be better than them, man. You know. We're going to be better. See, the same being better than somebody and killing a person with kindness, and I'm not going to. What do you call it now? I'm not going to speak to that low vibrational. That's what your own people will exercise about. Well. And even some niggas got to get you. Understanding who the laws of the Bible 
not to race mix and deal with one of the He should have got a black woman or a woman of the strong tribe. Him being with that white woman, he made a mistake by race mixing. But thank the most high, the child is of the father. So you still a so-called black man from the tribe of Judah, of the nation of Israel, but your mom is of a Judah, the nation. Her and the whole entire white race is going to be judged and condemned. Read. Every one of them. Yeah. And I'm not trying to disrespect your mother in that sense. I'm telling you, brother, what it is according to the scripture. Every one of them shall go into captivity. You know what I'm Every one of them shall go into captivity. Two things I need you to understand. What's your name? My brother Ryan, right? I'm going to go with the Bible. Two things you need to understand, right? When we deal with the Bible, we can't bring our personal knowledge on the Right? If my mom's was white, thank the Lord she's not. Uh, <laughs> Negro woman from Florida, but I would have to deal with it. If I came into this truth, I would have to deal with that. We have brothers in this war whose parents are evil. All right, come on. And they that spoil me shall be spoiled. God said every one of them shall go into captivity. So we can't, we can't, when we approach the scriptures, we got to leave our emotions out. As thus saith the Lord, and that's it. And when we, when we, when we teach the scriptures, we can't say what we feel or what we think people might hear. So that's what I'm saying. This ain't personal, brother. This is spiritual. This is what the Lord is not like. Oh, you just want to get on my mother because she's white. No, the Lord got on the entire white race in the Bible, and he condemned them for that. There you go. 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 You can't make this up. You can't make this up. Brother Ryan is already prophesying. Right. Right? Now, hold up, hold up. Hold on, your siblings, let me ask you this real quick. I don't, I don't, sorry to interrupt you. Sorry, hold on. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, but wait a minute. Your mom, are you the only child, are you the only, are you the only child that your mom's had by black man? So, hold on, hold on. Yeah, are you the only child that your mother had by white man? I mean, by black man. So that's what it is. And I'm going to you something. That what you're feeling from your mother, well, you we might as well give you a garment and <laughs> what you're feeling from your mother is because in her spirit she knows. No disrespect to you, brother, but that's the nigga child. Oh. In her spirit she knows that's the nigga child. And I'm just saying, a lot of I've talked to a lot of biracial children and they went to the same experience. They went to the same exact experience. So you already know, brother. You already know that. I feel it on the You're just a lighter skin, uh, uh, black brother. You, according to uh, the scriptures, we come in different shades of brown. The light skin, dark skin thing, that got started in 2016. All right, but they use that as a tactic to divide the slave. But, you a nigga. You know what I'm talking about? You walk through a sundown town, you'll be reminded of that. Right? Yeah. They know like this skin is. They know you're not a Caucasian. They'll take one look at your ass and be like, that's a nigga. He's a, he's a lighter nigga, he's a nigga. What you doing around here, boy? You ain't one of us. Yeah. I got treated the same by racist cops when I was growing up. I got harassed in the hood. I got thrown against the wood. And I was, I was lighter than this one. So they don't mind. They know when you're a nigga. They see that skin and they see the features. And I don't care how light he is, that's a nigga. When, when you're with a, 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 a black brother commits a crime, they don't care. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. A brother commits a crime, the, uh, the police will say, listen, he was a black man, okay. Was he light skin? Was he brown skin? Was he dark skin? What shade of all? Uh, he was around his complexion, okay. He was a light skin black man. Come on, Esau know that, man. But they still gonna say you a nigga, even though we're not black men, but it's a light what you know what I mean? So, your thing is to repent and come and unite with your people. Your mom, like I said, you can be argue with her, have a relationship with her, but when the time comes, the judge is gonna be. Uh, Matthew 25, 31. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 25, 31. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Matthew 25, 31. Read. The book of Matthew chapter 20, 25, verse 31. Good. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. Lord said, when, when Christ come, make the second coming. Good. And all the holy angels with him. And all the angels are going to come with him. Good. And shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. The Lord said he will sit upon the throne of his glory. Good. And before him shall be gathered all nations. All nations will be gathered before Christ will make the second coming. 
and he shall separate them. What is he going to do? And he shall separate them. Christ will separate the one from another. One from another. Gun. As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. The Lord said, just like a shepherd divides his sheep from the goat. Gun. And he shall set the sheep of his right hand. The sheep represent the Israelites by the commandments. Good. But the goat, the goat represents the so-called white man and all the other nations. Good. On the left. On the what? On the left. The Lord said he's going to separate us. Right. right. And when you read down, he tells you what he's going to do. The uh, righteous judgment he's going to put upon the sheep and the destruction he's going to bring upon the goat. All right. But we just read that part. So, right. so, you know, you can you can respect your mom, give her or whatever. That's still your mom. We got brothers in this group. They got me the mothers and they tell me this. They tell you, well, you're still my mom, but you have to give them right to We got to tell you what you do. So your job, our, our job as a people, now our brother is to focus on us. You know, you're a so-called black man from your father's side, your mother, and your mother. You got to respect this from that you're all the white man. You can be talking with your mom, but no, when the, when the Lord... Bring it out. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptian. Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptian. He grew up as an Egyptian. Like, come on. And was mighty in words and in deeds. He was mighty in words and deeds in Egyptian and all the Egyptian doctrine. Right, come on. And when he was 44 years old, I'm going to stop talking. Yeah, and when he was, and we, when he was full 40 years old, when he was full 40 years old, yeah. it came into his heart. It did what? It came into his heart. You see, Moses was amongst another black people, but it still came into his heart, meaning his mind. The same thing happened to you. It came into your mind that I relate more with the world. It came into Moses' mind that I relate more with the world like the Egyptians, even though the Egyptians are black people. Huh. Back one. To visit his brethren. His who? To visit his brethren. His who? His, to visit his brethren. I'm going to show you right there. See, everybody's afraid of the Bible. The Bible is a separate book. It said he was learned in the ways of the Egyptians, but he came into his spirit to visit his brethren. Because his brethren were the Israelites. Like, right, come on. It came to, to, to his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. God, man, who's your brethren? Who's your brother? Huh? Who, who's your brother? Who would you consider your brother? Not your biological brother. Your brother meaning your people. Oh, like we came out together. But where you from? What, what country you from? I'm from China. From China? Your first people that would be your brother is your Chinese people, right? Yeah. All right, there you go, there you go. Let's not do this. Yeah, can, can, right? can. No, 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 no. Don't fix it now. Yeah. No, 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 no. Don't, 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 don't doctor it up now. Don't doctor it up now. It should now. be Chinese. Listen, and listen. Yeah, but listen, I don't need to know why. There's nothing wrong with what you just said. There's nothing wrong with what you just said. Bring. And what? He was full 40 years old. Now, when Moses turned fully 40, good. It came into his heart. All right, see that the Lord was using the He was just using the that his first brother would be the second. Right, wow. And he's not wrong for that. He's not wrong for that. Good. See that the Lord used him as a prop. My God. Brother Ryan said it. He said it. My spirit always gravitated to my black people. We're reading where it happened with Moses, even though Moses was with another black nation. Right. And then Moab put the mail in the pocket and said, my brothers are my trainees. Right. And when 
he was who, 40 years old, uh, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. It came into his mind and spirit to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Good. And see one of them suffer wrong. Good. He defended him. He what? He defended him. He seen his brother suffer wrong. And avenge him that was a rest. Avenge means to take revenge for. What? And smoke the Egyptian. And then what? And smoke the Egyptian. See, I, even though the Egyptians were a black man, most of them were Egyptians. See, I. So, my point being, I say all that to say and use the script as an example. And Moab was a rock. But it's like the movie. What happened? What you just said. The script is very impressive. And I said, you know, the script is always playing.
So now you gotta repent, man. Keep these commandments. We out here every Wednesday. You gonna come get this good word and this truth. Uh, All right, come on, man. Keep getting the word, man. We got some information. Keep the word. All right, come on, say, okay, go to the Come on, son. Come on. Like, um, give me two. 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 Good, man. Maybe we kind of some seeds for the Khan, sure right. did. Brother Aiden said he's going to still try to get the mics. Well, hopefully, man, he's going to have to learn the hard way. <laughs> brother Aiden's like 18, man. You know what I'm saying? Slack it. The brother, the other brother, the other brother I was building with, this is second day here. Okay. He came, oh, be, oh, he, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah huh? This is second day coming back. He was here the last pull up. Elder Tara was out here. So he came back. So brothers is coming back. Okay, Yeah. He said he'd been watching you for a while. Yeah, he means well. He means well, but he got that over eager spirit. Luke chapter 15 verse 10. Likewise, I said to you. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God. There is joy in the presence of the angels of Yahweh God. Over one sinner that repented. Over what? Over one sinner that repented. Over one sinner that repented. Oh, so there's joy in the angels of the most high. So, right, so we out here to do a service to our people, man, to bring the children of Israel back. Right, so give me that. All right, give me, um, um, Isaiah. All right, give me Isaiah 49 and 5. Right, we out here to do a service. To bring the sons of Jacob back to the Most High. That's what it's about. You see, man, how easily we can flip the script? Y'all can run your mouth all y'all want to ask and don't run us. And all you got to get out there is do a scream at the white man. Wait a minute. As soon as a lot of Israelites come in front of us, we teach them. We flip the script, man. Huh? Let's deal with our people. We're going to suspect the cap. It's all cap and damn envy against the brothers out here. That's what they get. And you think it's Let's have a, a righteous dialogue about it and clear it up. And ah. we show you thousands of hours of video mm -hmm. of, and show that your ass is lying. We don't just yell on the street and at the white man. We teach our people. You gay saying Negro right. or Negress. Come on, I said 49 and 5. Keep that damn gay saying spirit, man. There's always something negative. Mm -hmm. You just scream at the white man in the corner. That's a damn lie. Right. Like, read what you got, King. And now, said the Lord. That's for me from the How the hell we know how we're friends? We know that we're friends if we just scream at the white man on the corner. Oh, Obviously, we have to teach the law on fringes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> King, King. Isaiah 49 and verse 5. And now, said the Lord, hey, that for me hey, from the womb hey, to be hey, his son, to, yeah, to bring hey, Jacob hey, again to him. To do what? To bring Jacob hey, again to him. Hey, to bring Jacob hey, again to him. Hey, hey, hey. Though Israel be not gathered, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord said, we shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, Our job is to bring Jacob again unto the Most High. Well, I need some. Maybe you want to yeah, prove yeah. us you got a little black string. Read it off. Tonight. It might be man, that guy better take his ass. He better take his ass back to the meth lab. <laughs> and my God, and my God shall be my strength. The Lord said he's gonna be our strength by our strength. By our strength. So it's a beautiful thing, man. But though this will be not gathered, yet shall be glorious. Don't tell us that nonsense, man. All right, we are doing a service to our people. Right, give me our uh, Hebrews 6 and 10. Huh. We're doing a service to our people, man, to try to wake them up. We're giving us good gospel and this good word, man. Right, but don't be a gainsayer and negative. What are you doing for the nation? Always criticize, 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 criticize. What are you doing to build the nation? Like God, James. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to get your works and labor of love. The Lord said he's not unrighteous to forget our works and labor of love. God. Which he has shown toward his name. We do this all in the name of Bashim Mashiach. Of course, Yahweh, Bashim Mashiach. Good. In that he had ministered to us. We have ministered, we're serving. This is the service we do for our people. Like God. To the saints. 
and do minister. The saints are here tonight, so we minister to the saints and we do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence. The Lord said we desire that every one of every servant that the most high call show the same diligence. Man. Right, come on. To the full assurance of hope unto the end. The full assurance of hope unto the end. Right. That he be not swarthy. The Lord said don't be swarthy, man. Hold that give me uh Proverbs 10 and 4. Hold me with Proverbs 10. Give me Proverbs 10 and 4. Alright? Don't be swarthy, man. Alright? Not on. Alright? <laughs> Proverbs 10 and 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. The Lord said, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. And poverty don't always have to be money. Poverty can be spiritually, it can be practically, like, you know, your, 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 the work the work is poor, the work doesn't build because it's slack. You know, it can be, you know, it can be in many forms. It can be poor, like, you just, you're not progressing in general because you're slack. Mm -hmm. Like that, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack Hand, God. but the hand of the diligent make it rich. The Lord said the hand of the diligent make it rich. And rich is not only for money. Rich is, 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 is a building, a richer in knowledge, richer spiritually, richer with the brotherhood. That, that, but if you slack and not diligent, applying and doing this work, you're going you're gonna to be in poverty. And even spiritual poverty can so care. You don't always have to be money. By God. He that gathered in summer is going to sit on that. Go back to uh, Hebrews 6 and all uh, the first book. Hebrews 6 and all the first book. Hebrews 6 and all the first book. Hebrews 6 and all the first book. Yeah, man. You're going to get slack, slack, slow for this. It's going to send some money, man. And it don't always have to be money. But that, but that is like money. If you don't get your ass up and do no kind of work, you ain't going to have no money. Come. You don't get out there and hustle or do something. You know what I'm saying? Put some, apply something, then... You're going to just go and send the poppy, meaning we already there before, but you ain't going to really have nothing. You know what I'm saying? But Hebrews 6 and 12, that he be not slothful. That you be not slothful. Come on. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit. But followers of, of them that through faith and patience. Come on. Inherit the promises. They do what? Inherit the promises. They inherit the promises, man, through faith and patience. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of your heart. All right, so you, you can't be slothful in this thing. You got to be diligent. The brother, the brother tried to say, oh, you think because you go out there on the corner every week, that means something? No, not necessarily. But the scriptures say to be diligent. And it does mean something. That's probably how your idol ass woke up. But now you're such a, you such a, a, a damn critic of brothers doing the work. And that's how I just saw, I just saw a video. Nobody saw what was on the street. Nobody saw, you know, but we don't want to get to that. That's a goddamn long going. That damn debate. But anyway, this work is going to be done. This is like an expanded chapter. You don't give a damn. You say, Matthew 24, 13. Get the classes. Matter of fact, start at 10. Get the classes. Endure to the end. Classic chapter. Classic chapter. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 10. And there shall many be offended. See, many going to be offended, man. Come. See, the brother Ryan, he kind of got offended in the beginning, but when I broke it down to him, I took baby steps with him. <laughs> so, you know, because a lot of times you got you to gotta be, you know, you got to walk in with them towards the doctor. You know, a lot of times you ain't got to call and say, well, your brother's a goddamn devil, and that bitch going to die. Shut up, that damn dog. Because you know the brother will be emotional, man. God. God. You gotta be, that's what some brothers say, the hell with it. She's the devil. That's how much But you gotta use a finesse this word too, man. You're not compromised, you still tell the truth, but you use the wisdom. Now the brothers all emotionally wanna fight and things, whatever. And some brothers, if they come out all like that, it is what it is. But you can only bring a balance to Right, come on. Matthew 24 and 10. And then shall many be offended. Remember the scriptures say, in meekness and instruct the those that oppose themselves. So sometimes, just because somebody come with an opposing argument or stance, don't mean you got to be on them all the time. You know, they said in meekness a lot of times, you got to instruct those that oppose themselves. Right, come on. And then shall many be offended. The Lord said, then many going to be offended. 
So the brother, he started out getting offended. Cause he's like, damn, what he saying, man? My mother's white. Like, come on. And shall betray one another. And shall betray one another. Go ahead. And shall hate one another. And shall hate one another. Go ahead. And many false prophets shall rise. Go ahead. And shall deceive many. Go ahead. And because iniquity <laughs> shall bow. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And you know the most I said, there's gonna be Pharisees among us. So those that are that are uh, uh, approved may be made manifest. Come on. And because iniquity shall abound, because sin shall be so prevalent in the earth, the, the love of many, the love of many cold. shall wax cold. The love of many is gonna wax cold because iniquity shall abound so much. There's so much goddamn sin in the earth. The love of many shall wax cold. Right, God. but he that shall endure unto the end. Because you want to have, uh, uh, you want to have drag queens twerking and giving a lap dance to a tenth grader in high school. This place is damn sick, man. This place is sick. That's why now you got opposing arguments, y'all, man. I'm gonna kill one of these damn trainers, man. They trying to do a story out with my child. Then the tranny said, if I'm gonna go into a woman's bathroom and you try to stop me, I'm gonna shoot you. Mm. So it's getting heated up, man. It's getting heated up. Because they're, they're getting them bolder and, and more courageous in their wickedness. And you're going to get bolder and more courageous in their wickedness. You're not going to force them, some tranny to read to my damn child in school. I'm going to catch a case out of it. Like, come on. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. What do I say? But this he that shall endure unto the, the end, end, he that shall endure unto the end, the same, same shall, shall be saved. saved. The same shall be saved. Huh. So that's what the Lord said. All right, come on. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Right, it's going to be preached in all the world. So you have brothers who want to travel. You know, some brothers understand that sort of to the mean like that. The gospel is being preached all over the world. All the internet now, through uh, social media, is going all over the earth. That's part of it, too. But also, physically, brothers are being addicted to the city and states. Physically, you want to start out in public and touch and everything. I'm like, come on. Be the Lord. When ye, when therefore, shall see the abomination of sin on that. Uh, 14, just now, um, verse 23. That if any man shall say unto you, Go, it is Christ. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 22. Matthew 24, 22. Come, Matthew 24, 22. And except those days shall be sure. Yeah, we be praying for the Lord to shorten this time, man. Uh, we be praying for the Lord to shorten this time. Except those days be shortened. Uh, good. Except those days shall be shortened, on. there shall no flesh be saved. And no flesh is going to be saved, right? Come on. Before the elect say, those days shall be shortened. And the Lord said, man, if I didn't come back soon enough, man, it might be pretty good. <laughs> For the elect say, man, I'm going to shorten the day. Uh, because remember the scripture saying, if it was possible, they would deceive the word. Right? God, just the third one of the chapter. Then if any man shall say it's true, no, here is Christ. Right, any man say, no, here is Christ. Right. Or, there, believe it not. Come on. For, in, for there shall arise forth Christ Come on. and forth prophets, yeah. and shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Right, they will deceive the very elect. Now, if it was possible, Lord, if it was possible, Perhaps, right? Perhaps. 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 Perha
Verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Now, who's going to be a faithful and wise servant? A lot of you ask, well, how do you stand this truth? There you go, by being a faithful and wise servant. Mm -hmm. But number one, how do you stand this truth? The answer is within the question. By standing this truth. Wait. <laughs> 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 I'm not trying to be funny. No folly, no folly. Come. But uh, yeah, I got a, I got a, a brother asked me at the other day. I got, I got <laughs> oh, an answer on the back. I, I forgot to answer this question. But how did the answer is within itself? How do you stay in this truth? By staying in this truth. Uh, right, go ahead. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Come on. Who is Lord have made ruler over? And, that, and that's one way you, be, you stay in this truth, by being a faithful and wise servant. Meaning you always do you. Because when you do the work, you're showing your faith. That's mm -hmm. how you're a faithful servant, by doing the work. A feast, and not just camp, and everybody don't get simple. Oh, you just go on the street corner. It's all no. But that's a major part of it. Because the Lord said, cry it out and spare it mm -hmm. He said, go into the chief place of the concourse. He said, go out there. How they going there without a messenger? Right, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Who his Lord has made ruler over his household. Come on. To give them meat in due season. Wait, and the Lord is going to give us our reward in due season. A lot of our people, oh, if I go yelling on that corner, what am I going to do? If I go put on the clothes, what am I going to get? Or if I go to those and sit and, and eat a piece of lamb with that flat bread and that stuff that takes riddle, what is that going to do? My God, blessed is that servant who is born when he cometh shall find so doing. Right, he said, blessed is that servant that when the comes to come, you're going to find him later in the day. That's what's up. Come on. Verily, I say to you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. He shall what? Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. God said he's going to make him ruler over all his goods. All right? You've been a faithful servant. What are you going to get? You're going to get heaven and earth. The earth, the, the, uh, the heavens, the earth, and the universe. Right. Everything going to heaven. All right? It's all going to be ours. All right? Come on. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, God. my Lord delayeth his coming. A lot of you got an evil spirit. The reason why you got an evil spirit because you don't trust and believe in the Lord enough to wait for it. It, it, it is what it is. You don't trust and believe in the Most High enough to be patient and wait for him. That's why the Lord says you're an evil damn servant. Right, come on. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. Uh, you in that stupid stuff again? You still going out there? You still believe in that stuff? Like you guys been teaching the same thing for years and where did it get you? See that? That's all that, man. These are brothers and sisters that were standing right there in the truth. And you thought they believed in what you believe in at the same time. But they, they gave up. They lost faith. Mm. They, 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 um, they lost patience. Mm. Like they wasn't long suffering with the Lord like he was long suffering with us. Right, go ahead. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. And in an hour that he is not aware of. Now you're going to get all caught up into this world. And yeah, you know, I'm in this kingdom. I'm doing me. I'm living my life. I'm good. I'm free. I'm happy. The house shall go right up on your house. Mm -hmm. right, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. The Lord's going to cast you out just like the. It's going to be as if you never believed. All right. And he, gonna, he said he's going to give you his portion with the hypocrites. Because at one time. You believed in it. So, so we thought, unless you was go BS in the whole time, mm -hmm. right? Come on. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his fortune. A lot, of, a lot of our people, a lot of brothers and sisters, man, you got to ask yourself, yo. All right, good. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his fortune with the hypocrites. Now, you, you check them, they, they think they do, they don't want to fight. But they obviously left you. So they think they do. You gotta smack them around. Then they wanna go get their older brother. And he's dumb. So you know. But uh, so we're gonna go some of this Read it again. Matthew 24 and verse 51. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his fortune with the hypocrites. Come on. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's gonna be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because you're gonna be like, damn, I remember that brother was in the spirit. Yeah, but a lot of people that gave up on the house side and lost patience and start 
Because what happens is, you know what happens too? A lot of times when people give up on this truth, they get frustrated at you because you still live. Mm. And that's why the highest chance that they start smacking their fellow brothers. They start putting that truth you still walk in. Are you still believing that truth and stuff? That stuff is high. La, 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 la. I believe that that's what you're having. What are you doing that you're actually saying? And it's been spoken about. It's stuff that is real because the Bible speaks about it. Good. Uh, that's what I'm doing, right? Yes, yeah, so what do we have to do and do it to the end? Like we read in, the, in verse 13. You give up, then you don't stop. You don't say, give me a revelation of what you say to God. Yeah, Revelation 3, 15, that'll be the last word. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 11. Revelation 